Hello, welcome to today's video. This is a quick progress update on reverse engineering the Nissan LEAF battery management system. Uh, using my trusty voltmeter here, I've gone ahead and uh, mapped out what every pin, all 100 pins on their microcontroller go to, and I've written that down on this piece of paper. Uh, if you go back to some of the previous videos, uh, the original plan is to replace this microcontroller with my own, and in order to do that, I have to make a little board that I can solder in here with my micro on top of it. So, that's essentially what I've done. Uh, I went and mapped all of this from the piece of paper here into a uh, Ultium Designer. This is that NEC microcontroller. It is a PD70F3236. Um, microcontroller and uh, so I've, I've mapped everything out there. Not all of the functions are essential so I went and just kind of got all the ones that will fit uh, on my micro and this is the micro that I chose. It is uh, made by microchip. It is a DSPIC 33EV256GM106 which is essentially the automotive 5 volt version of uh, microcontrollers that I typically use. The 33E series um, peripheral pin select makes life really easy so that I can map hey you know all these can be edit analog channels and peripheral pin select can map to anything um, anything to anything so well there are some limitations but uh, lets me just randomly choose the next nearest one that that I can pin that I can reach uh, I do have some unused pins just due to the layout issues I couldn't quite utilize them and uh, speaking of the layout, here's the layout. So what I've gone ahead and did is, you can see the lower blue bottom layer is a, um, and actually I can just, just hide this. Let's just do signal and get rid of it. So the bottom layer, I threw that logo on there, except it's backwards because I actually, hold on, flip it. there you go. So this is the bottom layer, and what I've done is taken a 100-pin thin quad flat pack footprint and made the board size smaller so it's going to lop the ends off, the, ed the pins off. So it'll essentially make it look like a 100-pin QFN package. You can see how my little V is where I did all the routing to, let me flip over to top here, hide that. So on the top layer here, so this is a programming connector, uh, my programming connector. Um, so kind of ignore that, that wouldn't normally be on here unless doing programming and debugging and stuff. Uh, you can see all the little vias I broke out to everything and then I've got some resistors and some bypass caps on here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I just went ahead and did nearest neighbor. So if I go turn that other layer back on, you can see I just literally just routed through and grabbed the nearest neighbor to get everything hooked up went around the entire chip and that's one of the neat things about having a micro that has the peripheral pin select so if this needs to be like down here I it's like oh yeah I need uh, I need this pin to be CAN bus okay that pins now my CAN receive I wanted that pin to be CAN transmit it's now CAN transmit so I can go ahead and you know here's your RS-232 pins, you can just set them to whatever you want, and then those become transmits and receives. It's really nice, makes things easy. So let's go ahead and put that back there. And of course, everyone wants to see three mode, boom. So I went ahead, all my vias are tinted to help, or tinted to help um, facilitate soldering, because it's gonna be pretty difficult to get in here. Probably gonna do solder paste and um, hot air to actually solder it. Uh, but you can see my this my 64 pin QFN is fitting on top of essentially my PCB which is acting like a 100 pin QFN. And uh, we can do this. I tried this earlier. I need to hold down shift. I want to get my mouse here in the center. Okay, wait to hold down the shift key and then I can I can move this around. So 
So from the bottom side, it'll just be a QFN. So the, the copper that's going over the edge will be cut off. That gets routed off, right? So you end up with just this giant QFN package looking PCB with my micro on top. And we got the debug connector, so we'll be able to go and uh, get that all programmed. And uh, yeah, so that should be pretty good. And um, for uh, just so you know, for a uh, sense of scale, these are 0402 resistors. So they're one millimeter across by 0.5 millimeters wide. And to get you a real world scale of how small that is, here's one sitting on top of a penny. That little tiny black thing right there is the resistor. 0402 resistor. Hopefully that shows up. Uh, let me do this here. So it's this little guy right here. That's not a speck of dust. That is an actual resistor. Isn't that crazy? So that is the parts that we're going to be dealing with. And uh, that whole thing will just get soldered right in here. I'll go ahead and remove this microcontroller. And then uh, solder that a whole assembly will just go right on there. And uh, hopefully everything works. Anyways, thanks for watching.